Click the bell icon to get latest videos from Ikeda. Hello friends, I welcome you all to this video. We are with the 11th chapter of microwave engineering where the microwave resonators are to be addressed. We started this chapter with first of all to see what exactly the series resonant circuitries are there and next to that the parallel resonant circuitries those have been constructed by the use of lumped elements the lumped elements are the register r the inductor denoted by capital l the inductance value and the capacitor by the capacitance capital c there so with respect to both the series connections that it means one after another for the rlc components and in the parallel connection we have formulated the expression for the input impedance denoted by z suffix i n there also we have defined the resonant frequency in the angular form denoted omega suffix 0 or omega suffix r and also we have given introduction to the quality factor the definition we have discussed so far so let us add some more knowledge with respect to the loading and unloading condition to this so let us begin with the topic so here we start with our topic loaded and unloaded q here so as in the previous two topics we have dealt with the quality factor capital q that was basically defined by the equation omega the angular frequency in multiplication to the ratio where the numerator we have the average energy stored with respect to the denominator that is having the energy dissipation per cycle so here the numerator that shows the average energy stored can be having both the forms of the energies that it is the electric form of the energy and magnetic form of the energy correspondingly denoted by w suffix e and w suffix m here whereas as we know the lumped elements r l and c here the storage of the energies will be corresponding to these two components here the capacitor will confine to the electric form of the energy storage whereas the inductor will confine to the magnetic form of the energy storage and r will be responsive for the losses to occur by the energy dissipation per cycle hence r was accounted to have the p loss into the use there now when only the resonator circuit is used without the effect of any kind of external circuitry for loading cases there that time we have used q in the form of q0 and called it to the unloaded quality factor q0 here but it is not always the practical case because we shall be having the coupling of these microwave resonators for many of the applications as we have already introduced for the filtering case or for making the frequency measurement or in the terms of oscillations to make some energy generated there so the practically there it is the requirement of the coupling and definitely there shall be a loading condition existed therefore so therefore the theoretical knowledge that we have expressed for the mathematical representations of the unloaded q0 are no longer to be utilized it has to be modified to that of the loaded quality factor in general that can be represented by q suffix l here now let us imagine this circuitry where the square block is a representation of the resonant circuit so this resonant circuit will be having its individual quality factor without or discarding the loading effects of external circuitry hence it will be initially having unloaded quality factor q sub 0 now in the practical sense we have in general the connection to that of the load resistance capital r sub l here 
So now when we have the coupling of RL with respect to the resonant circuit. So for the case when we have RL coupled to that of the resonant circuit of series type there. So in the series RLC we have the connections of R, L and C one after another. So there are three components into the series. So now this RL component will be added to the pure resistance R in the series form. So therefore it will be getting the form R added to RL in place of capital R only. So this is for the series resonant circuit in place of the square block. Now when we have in place of the square block to be the parallel resonant circuit. So whatever the individual branches corresponding to R, L and C are there in the parallel connection, the R, L will be having a parallel connection to that of this pure R here. So it will be of the effect that in place of the individual R, we will have to take into consideration the equivalent form R in multiplication to R L divided by the addition of the two R added to R suffix L here. So then we can have the determination of the loaded quality factor Q suffix L for the entire circuitry that is having the external loaded circuit resistance added to the resonant circuitry there. So now here we can make a form of definition. So it will be having the definition of external quality factor Q suffix E or Q suffix EXT in general we can go for. So that will be opting the value omega 0 times L divided by the load resistance RL. So this is for series circuitry here. Whereas the QEXT, the external quality factor will be opting the value, the inverse of this RL divided by omega 0 times L here. So this is for parallel circuitry here. So that time this definition of QEXT implies to the definition of the loaded quality factor QL given by the expression 1 upon QL loaded quality factor is equal to 1 upon QEXT added to 1 upon Q0 the unloaded quality factor. So this relationship is very very important. So if you have the knowledge of the unloaded quality factor for the individual resonant circuitry either it is of the parallel or the series type along with the external loading. So you can calculate the final loaded quality factor denoted by QL here. Now let us have a simple summary of various parameters that we have derived so far in the previous two topics corresponding to the series and parallel connections. So here we make a tabulation. So in this tabulation we have first of all the quantity into the column number one and into the middle column we can be expressing the series resonator and at last the parallel resonator here. So we start with first of all the input impedance. The input impedance for the series resonator I mentioned here. So it can be given of the form ideally R plus J omega L here minus J times 1 upon omega C and finally approximated at the end of the topic number 1 that it was R added to j times the ratio of twice r into q0 into delta omega divided by omega 0 here. Next to that in the parallel resonator on the another hand we can be using 
the admittance instead of having the input impedance here so we can give it to the form the input admittance y suffix i n is equal to 1 upon r added to j omega c minus we have j times 1 upon omega l here and it can be approximated to the form we have 1 by r added to j times twice q into delta omega divided by r times omega 0 here so this is the first quantity i can say either you express the input impedance or the input admittance for the case of parallel resonance here the next we can talk about the power loss so the power loss can be denoted for the series connection p suffix loss here it can be expressed in the form we have 1 by 2 times mod of i which is squared in multiplication to capital r whereas the p loss for the parallel resonator is expressed as 1 by 2 times mod of v squared divided by capital r here when we talk about the storage of energy into the magnetic form denoted by w suffix m so w suffix m for the series resonance condition we obtain into the form 1 by 4 times mod of i square into l so the inductor will be responsible for the storage of the magnetic form of the energy whereas w sub x m for the parallel resonance condition we have obtained to the form 1 by 4 mod of v square we have in multiplication to 1 upon omega square l here in continuation to this when we go for the storage of electrical energy denoted by w sub x e for the series resonance circuitry we have w sub x e is equal to 1 by 4 times mod of i which is squared in multiplication to 1 upon omega square c whereas for the parallel resonance circuitry we have w sub x e computed by making 1 by 4 mod of v which is squared into the capacitance value c here after the storage of the electrical energy we have the resonant frequency that can be either denoted by omega sub x 0 or omega sub x r in general for the series form we have omega sub x 0 is equal to 1 upon square root of lc whereas for the parallel connection we have omega 0 is equal to 1 upon under root lc the same value here so the formula for the resonant frequency for both the circuitries using the lumped elements r l and c is the same here so it will be dependent on l and c only next to that when we talk about the unloaded condition for determination of the quality factor for the resonant circuitry of series type we have q sub x 0 expressed as omega 0 into l divided by capital r it can also be expressed into the form 1 upon omega 0 into r c here whereas for the parallel resonant circuitry we can express q 0 is equal to omega 0 into r c it can also be of the form r divided by omega 0 times l here whereas if we have the external quality factor computed for the series resonant circuitry we have q e x t is equal to omega 0 into l divided by the loaded resistance r l at last we have the external quality factor for the parallel resonant circuitry is equal to the loaded resistance rl divided by omega 0 into the inductance value l here so here we conclude our topic with respect to the loaded and unloaded q by the next lecture we shall be addressing the another topic that it is short circuited lambda by 2 transmission line there so we shall be continuing with the same chapter to see the microwave resonators further. 
for more such information and the details of various concepts related to microwave engineering subject you can subscribe to ekeda channel thank you